Hi everyone and welcome to the show. I'm Nancy Guppy here at the kite flying capital of Seattle, Gas Works Park. Yes, okay Joey, show here them how it's go. done. Here we go. Do it. Do it. Okay. Try to get the wind. Okay, well. Okay, well, well. While Joe's uh, trying to figure out the kite thing, uh, let's get to the art because we've got a tremendous lineup for you, including rock music photographer Mari Tamura, creativity for kids at Roaring Mouse, Seattle street fashion, and fresh music from Aline and Wes. We'll begin with renowned sculptor and muralist Morella Zacharias, who is the current artist in residence at Mad Art Studio in South Lake Union. The title of the show is Inside Out. This is a reproduction of the Temple of the Feather Serpent, which is in the archaeological site of Xochicalco in Morelos. I love going there, I love seeing it. It's like a beautiful temple architecturally, but also the carvings around it. It's like a very powerful building. And it was created when the empires of the Aztecs and the Mayans uh, were destroyed. And so, so Chicago is one of the only places in Mesoamerica that combines art from both Mayan and Aztec. On the carvings outside, you see like Mayan figures of priests surrounded by these like very Aztec feather serpent that goes all around. And so to me, this temple became a symbol of rebuilding a new future with people coming together to do this. I use wood and mesh, which I usually form to create these you know, organic sculptures. I decided to dedicate this temple to Siwakotl. She's the female serpent. She's a warrior, and she is the one who gives strength to women when they're giving birth. She's the one who's in the, at the center of the pyramid. When you walk around, you can see her, and she's kind of the heart of the, of the exhibition. And she's being protected by this very fragile structure. The murals to me is like a reaction to the carvings on the, on the pyramid. I'm using some elements, but not getting caught out on it. It's just like allowing for the symbols to, to come through. And I want people to feel enveloped by color and energy. Part of the show too was like me going back to painting murals, which I hadn't done in about 10 years. It's something I did for a long time that I stopped. I also thought a lot about like the lines and the geometry of the pyramid and you know, I wanted the, the murals around it to speak to that and through it so that the pyramid activates the murals. You know, it's not this object that it's solid in the middle, but it's transparent. And so they're kind of mirroring and filling in the spaces of the pyramid. Yeah, I mean, I feel super grateful and very lucky to be able to be creating art at this time. The fact that I have the opportunity to process what is happening in the world through painting and through creating, it's a huge gift. I'm very grateful for the opportunity. Gracias, chicos. See Morella in action Thursday through Saturday from 12 to 4, now through October 14th. Inside Out opens October 15th and runs through December 12th. More information is at madartseattle.com. Our musical guest this week is the talented duo Aline and Wes performing What You Think You Need from their brand new EP, Armageddon of Love. Oh my God, that's so sad. Wow.
Armageddon of Love is available on iTunes, and you can hear more of Aline and Wes on Bandcamp. Next up is my Zoom interview with Mari Tamura, a local photographer who specializes in capturing the high energy of live rock and roll. Well, Mari Tamura, it's so great to see you. Hi, Nancy. Congratulations on the book. That's a huge accomplishment. Thank you. That's really great. By the way, in, in your honor, I'm wearing my um, Jimmy Page t-shirt. Yes. <laughs> rock and roll. And what are you wearing? I'm wearing a Guitar Wolf t-shirt that I've had for about 15 years. And, and what does and it, it say? It says, Jet Rock and Roll. Right on, Guitar Wolf. <laughs> oh, that's so great. Um, all right, so you've been shooting rock bands live on stage since 2017. Mm -hmm. What got you going on this? What started you? Um, first I was, uh, well, I, I checked out of seeing live music for about 10, 15 years because I was uh, raising a family, mm -hmm. three boys, and my older one uh, turned 13 in 2017. So I figured I can get back to uh, what I liked to do before I had family. So um, I started going out, going out to see my husband's band then for the Night to Trash, and uh, I took my iPhone and shot the shows and I really like uh, the experience of capturing their energy. I just like to click my <laughs> camera and see the definition of their energy. So um, that's how I started. But I quickly figured out uh, my iPhone camera was just not cut out to shoot in live, uh, dark venues. So I went to buy a real camera. And that was the start. Yep. Well, so obviously you have not been doing this for a long time. Nonetheless, oh. there are stunning photos in your uh, book, Early Works. So you. can you talk about composing a shot in the mm -hmm. midst of a live raucous performance? Uh, that's a good question. There's no uh, method to it at all. I listen to their music and there's a moment within their songs that I can sense this energy build up and I just want to capture the peak of it. So when you're shooting uh, your photos in, in the midst of it all, can you tell when you have nailed it, when you know I've, I've got a great, I got a great shot? I don't know. I think I would say 90% of the time, I, I don't know. I was starting to get those uh, with my current gear, which I purchased at the end of uh, 2018. Mm -hmm. uh, and especially with uh, added external flash. Mm -hmm. So the, the cover shot of my book, this yeah. one, yep. um, I kind of knew I, I had a shot mm -hmm. in this one. Mm -hmm. Speaking of nailing it, how did you get that fantastic photo of Iggy Pop? Oh, that was, uh, that was a hard one. That was, I was so excited to be there mm -hmm. first, but uh, quickly figured out uh, I was in with 2,000 other people. Iggy Pop! Mm -hmm. And I was in the crowd, uh, maybe second row from the very front, and his, his set started and the uh, crowd went crazy and the retention wall broke. And, the retention uh, wall broke. Yeah. Wow. And uh, uh, every, everybody was everywhere. I was holding my camera and I thought I was going to hurt some people if, if I <laughs> have it out. So I put it away and somehow I ended up at the uh, stage left and uh, with three other spectators, lucky ones. <laughs> yeah. So I decided to uh, settle down and shot from there. How far were you from Iggy, would you say? 
Oh, uh, I was just right up against the stage edge. So, mm -hmm. I don't know, he could be within five meters range mm -hmm. of where I was standing. Pretty mm -hmm. close. Really crazy experience. Yeah, it's such a great shot. In the intro to mm -hmm. early works, uh, drummer Michael Fritz says, quote, you don't look at a Mari Tamora photograph, you experience it. Mm -hmm. So this statement is, is very well represented by the picture of the band Dirty uh, Sidewalks, which he is the drummer for, mm -hmm. playing at the Crocodile. So you obviously shot that on stage, kind of behind yes, the drum kit. I did. What photographic techniques, if you have them, what do you use to capture that immersive experience? Because your photos feel immersive. Oh, thank you so much. I like to use a wide angle lens. I just like to hit in front of the subject and shoot it as wide as possible. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Not from a distance. I just like to represent my experience as being a part of the concert. All of the pictures are black and white. Why mm. did you choose that particular format? Um, I like black and white because I think it leaves a lot to the viewer's imagination or uh, experience and uh, also I just like the black and white for rock and roll. One, two, three, four. So your book ends with a, a, I believe it's about six pages, a tribute mm -hmm. to the legendary Tokyo band Guitar Wolf, which is of course what your shirt is. So you shot them in three cities over a three-year period. Can you tell me what Guitar Wolf means to you? Uh, they are my good friend for the last 25 years or so. They're nice dudes and uh, their energy output on stage is just like unmatched with any other bands. I, I really love that aspect about them. Uh, they might sound pretty trashy and you know some people say that's too trashy that that's outside of my limit but um, I just enjoy them for, for who, who they are. Yeah, yeah. Do you have a favorite picture in the book? Uh, well, obviously the, the cover picture I love a lot. And uh, that's a band called the Derelicts from Seattle. I, I love the way he works the whole venue. Mm -hmm. And he's shown here working uh, the, the floor. <laughs> Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I like them all though, yeah, so sure. it's, it's hard to pick a favorite and yeah. So all of the local clubs, mm -hmm. Nemo's, Slim's, El Corazon, all of them are closed obviously and have been since March. What right. has it been like for you to not be able to go out and take pictures? Oh, I miss it so much. I, I was starting to miss it. I was going through my past photographs and re-edit and um, just messing with what I have done in the last three years and uh, my husband suggested I should do a book mm -hmm. and that was a great project for me because <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm not taking new pictures and I'm just like I, I just can't be sitting around and feeling sad about mm -hmm. not being able to uh, go shoot new pictures mm -hmm. but uh, here's, a, here's a book so <laughs> Well, uh, Mari, your, your, your book is great, and I love your intent. I love your passion for what you're doing. It's so heartfelt, and I know that the bands that you shoot and the photos you take, I know how much that means to artists. So um, thank you for what you do. Thanks for putting out the book, and I'm looking forward to Early Works, the sequel. <laughs> it won't be early, but... Middle, the middle years. The middle. <laughs> I've got right. our early works out the way. Thank you so much, Mari. It's great talking with you. Thank you, Nancy. You can get your copy of Early Works at staticdist.com and you can follow Mari on Instagram. Finally, we have a suggestion. Finally, we have a suggestion for how kids can get their art on from home. Roaring Mouse Creative Studio has been helping kids explore who they are through the awesome power of art for over 23 years. Now, of course, because of the pandemic, in-person classes aren't happening, 
But the smart folks who run Roaring Mouse have come up with an alternative called Mouse at Your House Monthly Art Kits. Each kit has a theme and includes a variety of sensory and play-based art activities, as well as all the materials your child needs to create an original piece of art. Also, Roaring Mouse will be offering their annual holiday gift-making class in the form of an art kit. It's a super fun way for kids to make and give thoughtful, handmade gifts to the people they love. More information on all things Roaring Mouse is at RoaringMouse.org. And that's a wrap from Gooseworks Park. Thanks so much for tuning in. Have a safe, wonderful week, and we'll see you soon. Wow, he did it. Uh-oh.